Scania AB, formerly AB Scania VABIs, is a major Swedish manufacturer of commercial vehicles, specifically heavy trucks and buses. It also manufactures diesel engines for heavy vehicles as well as marine and general industrial applications. Scania AB was formed in 1911 through the merger of Södertälje based VABIs and Malmo based Maskin Fabrics Aktibolage Scania. The company's head office has been in Södertälje since 1912. Today, Scania has production facilities in Sweden, France, Netherlands, India, Argentina, Brazil, Poland, and Russia. In addition, there are assembly plants in ten countries in Africa, Asia, and Europe. Scania's sales and service organization and finance companies are worldwide. In 2012, the company employed approximately 42,100 people around the world. Scania was listed on the Nasdaq OMX Stockholm Stock Exchange from 1996 to 2014. Scania's logo shows a griffin, from the coat of arms of the province of Scania. Swedish, Skain. History VABIs and Maskin Fabrics Actibolage Scania AB Scania VABIs was established in 1911 as the result of a merger between Södertälje based VABIs and Malmo based Maskin Fabrics Actibolage Scania. VABIs was established as a railway car manufacturer in 1891, while Maskin Fabrics Aktibolage Scania was established as a bicycle manufacturer in 1900. Both companies had tried their luck at building automobiles, trucks and engines, but with varied success. In 1910, Maskin Fabrics Aktibolage Scania had succeeded in constructing reliable vehicles, while VABIs was at the brink of closing down. An offer from Per Alfred Nordemann, managing director of Maskin Fabrics Aktibolage Scania, to steel manufacturer Surahamars Bruck, owner of VABIs, led to an agreement in November 1910, and in 1911 the merger was a reality. Development and production of engines and light vehicles were set to Södertälje, while trucks were manufactured in Malmö. The company's logo was redesigned from Maskin Fabrics Aktibolage Scania's original logo with the head of a griffin. The coat of arms of the Swedish region Scania Skane, centered on a three-spoke bicycle chainset. Initially the headquarters were located in Malmö, but in 1912 they were moved to Södertälje. <laughs> First World War and 1920s Because there were many inexpensive, imported cars in Sweden at the time, Scania VABIs decided to build high-class, luxury cars, for instance the Type 3 limousine from 1920 that had a top hat holder in the roof. Prince Karl of Sweden owned a 1913 Scania VABIs 3S, a type which was fitted with in-car buttons so the passenger could communicate with the driver. Scania VABIs also built two-seat sports cars or sportautomobile. For the next few years the company's profits stagnated, with around a third of their orders coming from abroad. The outbreak of the First World War, however, changed the company, with almost all output being diverted to the Swedish Army. By 1916, Scania VABIs was making enough profit to invest in redeveloping both of their production facilities. Following the war, in 1919, Scania decided to focus completely on building trucks, abandoning other outputs including cars and buses. 
However, they were hurt by the swamping of the market with decommissioned military vehicles from the war, and by 1921 the company was bankrupt. After some economic difficulties in 1921, new capital came from Stockholm's Enskilda Bank owned by the Wallenberg family, and Scania VABIs became a solid and technically, high standing company. Denmark Towards the end of 1913, the company established a subsidiary in Denmark. The following year the first Danish-built car, a four-seater Phaeton, was built at the company's Frederiksberg factory in Copenhagen. In 1914, the factory produced Denmark's first Scania VABI's truck, and following this developed a V8 engine, one of the first in the world. In 1921, having sold around 175 trucks, and 75 cars, the Danish operation was closed down. Norway In 1917 an agreement was established with the newly formed Norwegian company Norsk Automobilfabrik A.S. about production under license of Scania VABI's cars and lorries. Production began in 1919, but was ended in 1921 after production of only 77 lorries, mostly built from Swedish produced parts. Topic: 1930s and 1940s. During the Second World War Scania produced a variety of military vehicles for the Swedish Army, including Strids von M. 41 light tanks produced under license. 1950s and 1960s During the 1950s, the company expanded its operations into new customer segments, becoming agents for the Willys Jeep and the Volkswagen Beetle, the latter being very profitable for Scania VABIs. It also started to become a genuine competitor to Volvo with their new L71 Regent truck which was introduced in 1954. During this period, Scania VABIs expanded its dealer network and country-wide specialist workshop facilities. By the end of the 1950s, their market share in Sweden was between 40 and 50 percent, and was achieving 70 percent in the heaviest truck sector, helped by the entrepreneurial efforts of their dealers into the holier market, probably their largest impact was in export markets. Before 1950, exports accounted for only 10% of production output, but a decade later, exports were now at 50% of output. Beers in the Netherlands became a very important partner. Beers became official importers for Scania VABIs in the Netherlands, and established a dealer network, along with training programs for both mechanics and drivers. Beers also offered free twice yearly overhauls of their customers' vehicles, and offered a mobile service throughout the Netherlands with their custom equipped service trucks. Due to Beers' concerted efforts, Scania VABI's market share in the country remained at a consistent 20% throughout this period. Scania VABIs were to adopt the business model of beers in their own overseas sales operations. The 1960s saw Scania VABIs expanding its production operations into overseas locations. Until now, all Scania VABI's production had been carried out solely at Södertälje, but the 1960s saw the need to expand production overseas. Brazil was becoming a notable market for heavy trucks, and was also dependent on inter-urban buses, with particular requirement for Brazil's mountainous roads which became nigh on impassable at times. On 2 July 1957, Brazilian subsidiary Scania VABIs do Brasil SA today known as Scania Latin America LTDA, was established and started assembling some vehicles themselves in 1958. 
On 29 May 1959, a new engine plant was inaugurated in the Ipiranga district of São Paulo, and from June 1960, Scania VABIs do Brasil assembled all vehicles themselves. Scania VABI's vehicles had already been assembled in Brazil by a local company called VMAG e Maquinas Agricolas SA for several years. Scania VABI's established its first full manufacturing plant outside Sodertalge, by building a new facility in São Bernardo do Campo near São Paulo, which was opened on 8 December 1962, and this was to set the standard for Scania VABI's international operations. Closer to home, the recently formed European Economic Community EEC offered further opportunities. Based on their now strong presence in the Dutch markets, Scania VABIs constructed a new plant in Svola, which was completed in 1964. This new Dutch facility provided Scania VABIs with a stepping stone into the other five EEC countries, particularly the German and French markets. In 1966, Scania VABIs acquired ownership of a then valuable supplier, BJ Carissera Fabric, who were based in Oskarsham. BJ had been making truck cabs since 1946, and had been supplying cabs not only to Scania VABIs, but also to their Swedish competitors Volvo. It was normal practice for truck manufacturers to outsource production of cabs to independent bodybuilders, so their acquisition by Scania VABIs seemed a good move. BJ owner Burr Goth Pearson had also established an additional cab factory at Meppel. Scania VABIs continued their expansion of production facilities through acquisitions. In 1967, they acquired Katrinholm based coachwork company Svenska Karasari Verkstaderna, and created a new subsidiary, Scania Busser. A year later, all bus production, along with R&D was moved to Katrineholm. Further production locations were added at Sibholt and Falun, and Scania's employee numbers rose, particularly at Sodertalge, which was to help double the town's population. Scania VABIs at some point in their history also manufactured trucks in Botswana, Brazil, South Korea, Tanzania, the Netherlands, Zimbabwe, and the United States. For some time Daimler-Benz waged a «logo war» with Scania VABIs, claiming a possible confusion between the Scania VABIs pedal crank design featuring on Scania bicycles around 1900 and the Mercedes three-pointed star. In 1968, Daimler-Benz won and the Scania VABIs logo changed to a simple Griffin's head on a white background. In February 1968, a new range of trucks was launched, and at the same time the company was rebranded as just Scania. In addition to VABIs disappearing from the name and a new logo, all current models received new model designations. Topic: 1970s and 1980s. In 1976, the Argentinian industrial complex was launched. A few months later, on 10 September, the first gearbox outside of Sweden was manufactured and finally in December an L111 truck became the first Scania made in Argentina. Soon the plant specialized in the production of gearboxes, axles and differentials that equipped both the units produced in Tucumán and those built in Brazil, also in Argentina. In 1982, the Series 2 was launched as part of the Scania program, consisting of the T112 and R112 trucks with two cab versions and different options in engine and load capacity. 
In 1983, was launched the K-112 made in Tucuman like the rest models for replace the BR-116. In mid-1985 Scania entered the U.S. market for the first time, aside from having sold 12,000 diesel engines installed in Mack trucks from 1962 until 1975, starting modestly with a goal of 200 trucks in all of 1987. Scania limited their marketing to the Northeast, where conditions resemble those in Europe more closely. Many examples of Scania, VABIs, and Scania VABIs commercial and military vehicles can be seen at the Marcus Wallenberg Hallen the Scania Museum in Sodertalge. Topic: <laughs> Ownership. Topic Saab Scania AB, nineteen sixty nine to nineteen ninety five. On the first of September, nineteen sixty nine, Scania merged with Saab AB and formed Saab Scania AB. When Saab Scania was split in nineteen ninety five, the name of the truck and bus division changed simply to Scania AB. One year later, Scania AB was introduced on the stock exchange, which resulted in a minor change of name to Scania AB PUBL. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Aborted Volvo takeover. On 7 August 1999, Volvo announced it had agreed to acquire a majority share in Scania. Volvo was to buy the 49.3% stake in Scania that was owned by Investor AB, Scania's then main shareholder. The acquisition, for US$7.5 billion, billion Swedish kroner, would have created the world's second largest manufacturer of heavy trucks, behind Daimler Chrysler. The cash for the deal was to come from the sale of Volvo's car division to Ford Motor Company in January 1999. The merger failed, after the European Union disapproved, announcing one company would have almost 100% percent market share in the Nordic markets. <inaudible> Aborted man takeover In September 2006, the German truckmaker Mann AG launched a €10.3 billion Euros hostile offer to acquire Scania AB. Scania's CEO Leif Osseling was forced to apologize for comparing the bid of Mann to a blitzkrieg. Mann AG later dropped its hostile offer, but in January 2008, Mann increased their voting rights in Scania up to 17%. Topic: Scania ownership today. Scania AB is 100% owned by the German automotive company Volkswagen AG, forming a part of its Volkswagen truck and bus GmbH subsidiary, along with Mann SE and Volkswagen Kamenhaus e Onibus. Volkswagen gained ownership of Scania by first buying Volvo's stake in 2000, after the latter's aborted takeover attempt, increasing it to 36.4% in the first quarter 2007. It then bought out Investor AB in March 2008, raising its share to 70.94%. The deal was approved by regulatory bodies in July 2008. Scania then became the ninth mark in the Volkswagen Group. By 1 January 2015, Volkswagen controlled 100% of the shares in Scania AB. Controversy In September 2017 Scania was fined €880 million Euros 8 BN Swedish krona by the EU for taking part in a 14-year price-fixing cartel. 
The other five members of the cartel, Daimler, Doff, Mann, Iveco and Volvo, Renault, settled with the commission in 2016. Topic: <laughs> Trucks and special vehicles. Scania develops, manufactures and sells trucks with a gross vehicle weight rating GVWR of more than 16 tons, class 8, intended for long distance haulage, regional and local distribution of goods, as well as construction haulage. The 1963 forward control LB76 forged Scania Vabus's reputation outside Sweden, being one of the first exhaustively crash-tested truck cabs. <laughs> Current All current trucks from Scania are part of the PRT range, but are marketed as different series based on the general cab height. P-Series, launched in August 2004, typical applications are regional and local distribution, construction, and various specialized operations associated with locally based transportation and services. P-Series trucks have the new P-cabs, which are available in several variations, a single berth sleeper, a spacious day cab, a short cab and a crew cab. G-Series, launched in September 2007, the series offer an enlarged range of options for operators engaged in national long haul and virtually all types of construction applications. All models have a G cab, and each is available as a tractor or rigid. The G series truck comes with five cab variants, three sleepers, a day cab and a short cab. There are different axle configurations, and in most cases a choice of chassis height and suspension. R series, launched in March 2004, and won the prestigious International Truck of the Year Award in 2005 and again in 2010. The range offers various trucks optimized for long haulage. All models have a Scania R cab, and each vehicle is available as a tractor or rigid. There are different axle configurations and a choice of chassis height and suspension. The Scania R730 is the most powerful variant of the R series. Its 16.4 liter DC16 turbo diesel V8 engine produces 730 PS, 540 kilowatts, 720 horsepower at 1900 revolutions per minute and 3500 Nm, 2600 pounds feet of torque at 1000 to 1350 revolutions per minute. S series launched in August 2016. It is the highest cab Scania has ever built. It features a completely flat floor and a low bed that is extendable up to 100 cm about 3.28 feet. L series launched in December 2017. It has an even lower cab than the P series. topic Historical Topic Buses and Coaches Scania's bus and coach range has always been concentrated on chassis, intended for use with anything between tourist coaches to city traffic, but ever since the 1950s, when the company was still known as Scania VABIs, they have manufactured complete buses for their home markets of Sweden and the rest of Scandinavia, and since the 1990s even for major parts of Europe. Chassis Scania VABIs was involved in bus production from its earliest days, producing mail buses in the 1920s. 
In 1946, the company introduced their B series of bus chassis, with the engine mounted above the front axle, giving a short front overhang and the door behind the front axle. The first generation consisted of the B15, B16, the B20, B21, B22 and the B31, primarily divided by weight class, and then by wheelbase. The latter became upgraded in 1948 and renamed 2 B20 halves B21 halves B22 and 3 B31. The T31, T32 trolleybus chassis was also available from 1947. In 1950, the next generation was introduced, with the B41, B42, the B61, B62, B63, B64 and later the B83. From then, Scania VABIs also offered the BF series chassis, available as BF61, BF62, BF63, which had the engine more conventionally mounted before the front axle, leaving room for the door on a longer front overhang. From 1954, the B series came as B51 and B71, and the BF as BF71 and later BF73. In 1959, the B55, B65 and B75 plus the BF75 were introduced, and were from 1963 available as B56, B66 and B76, plus the BF56 and BF76. Before the rebranding to Scania in 1968, Scania VABIs had delivered a very limited number of County Route 76 chassis frameworks less actual bodywork with transversally rear-mounted engine for external bodying, based on the complete bus with the same name. From 1968 it was also delivered as a standard bus chassis known as BR110. The other chassis models were renamed too, so the Scania VABI's B56, B76 became the Scania B80, B110 and the BF56, BF76 became BF80, BF110. The numbers in the new model designations were based on the engine displacement 8 and 11 liter, a scheme that Scania used for almost 40 years. In 1971, a new range of longitudinally mounted rear-engined chassis was launched, with the BR85 and its larger brother, the V8-powered 14-liter BR145, targeted at the coach market. In Brazil, the higher-powered version was equipped with the standard 11-liter instead of the V8, known as the BR115. Also the BR-111 was launched as the replacement for the BR-110, being derived from the County Route 111 complete bus. In 1976, many of the models were renewed, and designations were upped from 80 and 85 to 86, and from 110 to 111, except the BR-145 which was later replaced by the BR-116 in 1978. The BR-112 was launched in 1978 as a forerunner to the 2 Series, replacing the BR-111. The rest of the 2 Series were launched in 1981 with the F82, F112 replacing the BF86, BF111 and the S82, S112 replacing the B86, B111, and then in 1982 the K82, K112 replacing the BR86, BR116. The BR-112 was then updated to the N-112 in 1984, and a tri-axle version of the K-112 became available, known as the K-112T. In 1985, the K-82 and F-82 were replaced by the 8.5-liter-engined K-92 and F-92. 
Front-engined versions were in general discontinued on the European markets in the mid-1980s, but production continued in Brazil. In 1988, the 3 Series was introduced, continuing the main models of the 2 Series. In 1990, the new L113 became available, with a longitudinally rear-mounted engine which was inclined 60 degrees to the left, to make a lower height than the K113. The 4 Series was launched in 1997, continuing all model characteristics from the 3 Series, but with all of them being just modular configurations of the basic chassis. The 8.5-liter engine was replaced by a 9-liter, and the 11-liter was replaced by an 11.7-liter. They were joined by a 10.6-liter engine in 2000. The current Scania's bus and coach range has been available since 2006, and is marketed as the K-Series, N-Series and F-Series, based on the engine position. Current K-Series, rear-engined, longitudinal mounted with Euro 3, Euro V compliant engines N-Series, rear-engined, transversal mounted with Euro 3, Euro V compliant engines F series front engined with Euro 3 and Euro V compliant engines historical topic <laughs> complete buses Scania Vabus's first complete bus model was the transversally rear-engined commuter bus Metropole C50, which was built in the workshop in Södertälje on license from the Mac C50 in 1953–1954 for customer Stockholm Sparviger. It was followed in 1955 by the slightly shorter city bus version Capital C70, C75, C76, which was manufactured until 1964. In 1959, the front-engine CF series was introduced with the CF65 and CF75, later CF66 and CF76. The CF series was built until 1966. In 1965, the rear engine County Route 76 was introduced as a replacement for the Capital. It was available in two versions, the CR76M with double doors 2 2 for city and suburban traffic, and the CR76L with single doors 1 1 for longer distances. Because of Sweden's switch to right-hand traffic in September 1967 and the need for new buses with doors on the right-hand side, the model sold well. With the rebranding from Scania VABIs to Scania in 1968, the model was renamed County Route 110 CR110M and CR110L. In 1967, the coachwork manufacturer Svenska Karasari Verkstaderna SKV in Katrineholm was acquired, and all production of bus chassis soon moved there too. Together with the rebranding in 1968, Scania reintroduced the front-engine CF range for customers in Sweden as a body-on-chassis product with the newly acquired SKV's former bodywork model. 6,000 on standard Scania chassis, but less than 100 were delivered until 1970. The CF110L BF110 chassis was the most successful, while a handful of C80L B80 and C110L B110 were made. In 1971, the County Route 110 was upgraded and became the County Route 111. With extended sound proofing for its time, it was marketed as the silent bus. The same year, Scania also introduced a new range of longitudinally rear engine coaches known as the County Route 85 and the County Route 145. While County Route 85 had the small 8 liter engine, the County Route 145 was powered by a 14 liter V8 engine. The coaches were built until 1978, but never sold very well. 
In 1973, one right-hand drive County Route 145 prototype was built in Sweden, with the finishing touches done by MCW, but it remained the only one of its kind. The County Route 111 was replaced by the all-new County Route 112 in 1978. With its angular design, the County Route 112 was called a shoebox. As with the BR-112 chassis being renamed the N-112, the County Route 112 was renamed the CN-112 in 1984, and it was also launched in an articulated version. A North American version of the CN-112 was built in around 250 units between 1984 and 1988. The CK-112 was launched as a simple coach or intercity bus in 1986, sharing most of the styling with the CN-112. With the launch of the 3 Series in 1988, both the CN-112 and CK-112 were upgraded to CN-113 and CK-113. The CK-113 was replaced by the L-113-based CL-113 in 1991 with new rectangular headlights, but production ended in 1992. Less than 100 units of the CK-112, CK-113, CL-113 were ever built. The Maxi CN113 CLL, launched in 1992, was Scania's first ever low entry bus, with a low floor between the front and center doors, and kneeling to make entering even easier. The bodywork was based on the CN113, but with a lowered window line in the front half, and a new front including the headlights from the CL113. In 1996, the aluminium body Omnicity was launched as Scania's first full low floor bus, and in 1998 the Maxi was replaced by the Omnilink, which shared styling with the Omnicity. A step entrance intercity bus returned with the Omnilink in 2000. In 2007, Scania returned to the complete coach market with the Finnish built Omni Express, which in 2011 even replaced the Omnilene, which had gone out of production in 2009. Scania's current styling was first seen in 2009, with the launch of the Touring Coach, manufactured by Higer Bus in China, and in 2011 the Citywide was launched to replace both the Omnicity and the Omnilink. Scania in India launched their very own Metrolink Coach in 2013, built at their plant there. The latest addition to Scania's complete bus models is the Interlink, which was launched in October 2015 to replace the Omni Express. Current citywide, low floor and low entry city bus range Interlink, coach and intercity bus range, launched in October 2015 to replace the Omni Express Metrolink, coach for India Omni Express – Coach and Intercity Bus Range Touring – Premium Coach, manufactured by Higer Bush Historical <laughs> Buses through collaborations In addition to supplying chassis for external bodywork, and their own bodyworks, Scania have also collaborated with some bodywork manufacturers to deliver buses through Scania's distribution lines, both on a global base and on smaller markets. In 1969, Scania teamed up with MCW to make the Metro Scania single-decker for the UK market based on the BR110MH, and since 1971 the BR111MH chassis. In 1973, it was replaced by the Metropolitan double-decker, built on the BR111DH chassis. Production ended in 1978, when the BR-111 was replaced by the BR-112. 
East Lancashire Coach Builders (ELC) launched their low entry Maxi in 1993, one year after Scania's own left-hand drive version. It was followed by the L113 based European in 1995 until 1996. In 2003, ELC was back with both the Omnideca double decker and the Omnitown Midibus to complement Scania's own Omnicity. Since the mid 1990s, Scania started a long lasting collaboration with Spanish bus builder Irazar to sell their coaches through Scania's global distribution network. The agreement meant that Scania had exclusive distribution rights for all Irazar coaches in Northern Europe for many years. The most widespread model was the Irazar Century, but later also the Irazar PB was sold as Scania's premium coach. In 1985, Scania's Norwegian distributor and the Finnish bus builder Ajaki announced the Scania Classic, a coach built exclusively for Norway. It was technically based on Ajaki's own Royal Coach model, but received its own styling details. In 1990, when a jockey had become Karas, the second generation was launched based on the Vector – Regal models. The third generation from 1995 was also available in Sweden and Finland in limited numbers, and the fourth and last generation from 2001 was built with the same bodywork as the Volvo 9700. Volvo, who had bought Caris in 1998, put the foot down against any further Scania's with this bodywork from 2002, and since then Scania instead put the classic sticker on all Irazar Century sold in Norway for several years. The collaboration also led to some Norway exclusive intercity buses, the Scania Cruiser, a Jockey Victor, Scania Universal, Caris 50, and Scania Interclassic, Caris Vega, but neither of these had special styling nor as successful as the Classic. In 2006, Scania and Higer Bus announced the A80, the first coach in the Higer A series of coaches built on Scania chassis in China. The coaches are generally available in Asia, but the A30 is also available in Europe as an affordable intercity bus or simple coach. Even the A80 is globally available, but under makeup known as the Scania Touring HD, also referred to as the A80T. Since 2012, Scania and Belgian bus manufacturer Van Hool offer some of their most luxurious coaches from their TX series on Scania KEB chassis, including the Astronef with theatrical floor, the Astromega double decker, and the Altano. Since 2014, also the Xki City BRT concept is available on Scania N UA chassis with CNG powered engines. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Diesel engines. In addition to bus and truck engines, Scania's industrial and marine engines are used in generator sets and in earthmoving and agricultural machinery, as well as on board ships and pleasure crafts. Scania's involvement with internal combustion engine production dates back to 1897, when engineer Gustav Eriksson designed the engine for the company's first motor car. Over the subsequent years, Scania has grown to be one of the world's most experienced engine manufacturers, building engines not only for trucks and buses, but also for marine and general industrial applications, which are exported across the globe, year in parentheses as first year of application in road vehicles. Current. Topic Historical Topic Other Products Scania also designs and manufacture clothes especially designed for truckers under the label Scania Truck Gear. Topic 
Topic: <laughs> Production sites. The table below shows the locations of the current and former production facilities of Scania AB, as Scania is now majority owned by Volkswagen AG, making it part of Volkswagen Group. The table also includes Volkswagen Group references. Notes The second column of the table, the factory VIN ID code, is indicated in the 11th digit of the vehicle's 17 digit vehicle identification number, and this factory code is only assigned to plants which produce complete vehicles. Component factories which do not produce complete vehicles do not have this factory ID code. In 2015 Scania opened its first Asian plant in Bangalore, Karnataka, India. This plant specializes in bus and coach making. Former production site Topic <laughs> See also Category Scania AB Anax holding company created after an attempted acquisition of Scania by Volvo Marcus Wallenberg Holland, Swedish Vehicle Museum, including Scania vehicles Scania Torped, concept car List of Volkswagen Group diesel engines, includes all current Scania engines <laughs>